Everybody's here except Art, and he has an excused absence. And he's not going to go out this morning. Uh, I think everybody else is here. Just as a point of information, this seems to be the right place to do it. You've probably been following uh, Marsha Martin in the newspaper and so on. She's, uh, apparently, she's going to be out of the area at her. She's leased a place in New York, I understand, uh, with her daughter's got some issues. And um, she may or may not be back this fall. And uh, if she makes it to December 1st, it happens. I understand the city rules. You may have to design that. Yeah, I think so that maybe they're looking at that, but yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, she did send me an email. I, I inquired to how she was doing, and she said it was, uh, you know, it's, she didn't say it's tough, but I'm sure it is tough. And um, she sends her regards to the court. She really enjoys working with the court, so I want to pass that along. So, I'm wondering, do you think that it, that it would be uh, nice if we sent a, mm. to the city council or to the, somebody and said, you know, she's been a, we've involved with us and we appreciate all of her work and we look forward to working with her in the future and just letting them know that um, we're sort of behind her a little bit or, or not? I mean, that's just a thought. Oh. I think it'd be very nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It would just be a nice gesture to show her support. Yeah, I, I think, because they certainly seem to be getting in a yeah. negative. Yes, it's uh, yeah, quite somewhat unfair, I think. Yeah. But, uh, I think it's great of you. Uh, any volunteers to put the Oh, no. That's something I would do, Lonnie. I say, how do we want to do that? Uh, we have a volunteer to put something together to go to the city council. John will do it. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I think you know the sentiment of, of the group, so that'd be great. All right, approval of the agenda. Are there any uh, additions uh, to the agenda? I have one. I think we need to put the uh, LHA back under future agenda items. Uh, we really haven't gotten to that. Did you still want LHA on the agenda line? Um, under future items? Well, see, here's the thing. Sheila had, want, had thought it might be a good idea to get a developer and to get Molly O'Donnell yeah. to both come in and talk about different aspects of housing. Right. Molly had already been here, mm -hmm. yeah. and she was pretty clear about the affordable housing and that sort of thing. Um, if people still want to hear about attainable housing and, or from the developer side, we could do that. Um, but I think Molly has pretty much given a good assessment and a good you know, view. Everybody was here for that, right? Was everybody? Well, Molly, well, yeah, well, it was like a year ago. Uh, um, yeah, it was about a year ago. Uh, yeah. Yes. The housing department also had a bit of a restructure, so there's actually an assistant um, director, Lauren right. Sunny. Mm -hmm. And so if you're considering, um, you know, talking about or learning about um, housing authority and kind of what they're working on currently, I think Lauren might be a good, a good, a good fit. Well, I'm, I'm thinking, and I know I know that Lauren is new. If we want to learn about attainable housing, Lauren is strictly housing authority. Right. There's the and other side, affordable yeah. housing side of. Yeah. If we want to learn what's going on in the city as far as affordable and attainable housing goes, I think it needs to be somebody mm -hmm. other than Lauren. Molly, I thought could also talk about attainable, but I don't know that maybe somebody else. They would be. have um, Christy Weissman um, and um, Katie Silvas. Is are, are the two people that oversee those two areas as well. Okay. Uh, and Molly could, of course, give an overview of everything LHA, like she is the director of that department, but if you want to meet the, the new staff, that would also be important. I just think it would be nice to hear what's going on in the city total. Right. Yeah. So maybe 
Well, I think uh, housing is certainly something we want to keep up on. Sure. And I'll, I'll throw it back to you. You know, as far as uh, you know, we're working towards a presentation next spring for uh, March or April. When do you think the timing would be good for someone to come back in again? I think maybe like October or November. Okay. Of this year. Of okay. this year. That'd be about a year. I'm wondering if we want to wait until next year when they've got a few more things developed as far as housing <clears throat> goes and see what what that is. But well, we could always do like February. February. Well, let's 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 just wait until uh, let's tentatively plan on October. But if there doesn't seem to be anything new, we'll wait until the following year. Okay. So I'll, I'll kind of leave it up to you, frankly. That's okay. okay. All right. All right. I'm kind of pushing towards next year. So. Okay. That. That makes sense that the longer we wait, the more we hear about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll so we can judgment. put that on hold for now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Then never mind what I just said about adding that to the name. That's okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, someone make a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Okay. So moved and second, second by Bonnie. Uh, All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, approval of the minutes, last month's minutes. Any corrections or additions to the minutes? Very nice job, by the way. Okay. I looked through them. I thought they looked pretty good. I, 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 can, I can make a motion to approve. Okay, there's a motion to approve. Is there a second? There's a second. John? Any other discussion? Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, public invited to be heard. Is there anybody here? That wouldn't be you, Chuck. Could be. I'll see you on the phone. All right. Seeing none, we'll move on. Old business. Uh, updates. I don't know. John, I know you've got some material. And uh, we'll get to Arlene and Ronnie uh, uh, shortly. So, John. Well, covered a lot of ground since the last. Since our last meeting discussing about this, additional individual phone calls amongst the group because we haven't quite gotten the get the group meetings together with the city's favorite uh, recordings so of meet individually on the phone. This is always the kick. So we got some conversation with various food groups in the city county. And we asked about senior needs, how to make food hub work, food availability, food availability, and community notification. I think a minute each for my committee members to meet to discuss what they've done. Is that possible now? I didn't hear that last time. Can I, can I ask the food the committee members to give a quick report on what they've done? Oh, okay. Perfect. Sure. That's what I'm going to answer. One minute? Okay, okay. okay. this will be fast. <laughs> I'll take a minute and a half. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Worry. So generous. Okay, so I talked with um, Naomi Kerlin, who's the Long Lap Food Rescue. And she's also does refrigerators, and it was, it's all been so interesting. Um, their group is a volunteer group. They put two refrigerators in Long Island. They would love to put one here at the senior center. Pre-COVID, they had a table here at the senior center, uh, giving out food once a month. She'd love to set that up again. And she really wants to come to our board meeting, the September meeting. I don't know how we go about that, but just invite her. Just invite her because she said she's willing to come September, and I think it'd be good to hear from her because she wants to give a refrigerator to the senior center. Oh, so that's a good thing. I have a whole report, but I only have a minute and a half. No, take it, take it, take it, take it whatever you need. <laughs> Katie Weiser. Here, Meals on Wheels at the Senior Center. They serve 500 meals a day. 95% of them are delivered. Mm -hmm. um, meals are free Monday through Wednesday, Tuesday, and Friday, $2. Katie's not sure how much longer that can survive because of money. Um, it's the, the Meals on Wheels is the busiest it's ever been in history. And they are the outside of Denver. This Meals on Wheels is the busiest. So that, that says a lot. Of course, Katie, too, 
would like to have a contract with the city of Boulder so that they have more money. It's really, it, it's just so important. Okay, so the last person I spoke with, which of course is where I volunteer at the R Center on Collier Street, and I just think the world of that place because they do so much. I, I think it's the most food functioning place in Longmont because they serve breakfast and dinner, volunteers serve a meal on weekends. So they have a food market there, donated food from all over. They have volunteers that go pick up food from King Supers, uh, Whole Foods, and then people come in, new clients, and any client, and they pick up the food. Now, they serve a lot of seniors, but anybody can go to this. All you have to prove is that you live in the St. Vrain Food District. Uh, the cafe serves breakfast and lunch on weekdays. And seniors are an important part of, of uh, their clients, but they serve everybody. Um, Kevin is willing to help us with our food hub, um, but he has to go through the development director for that. And John and I were wondering where to get plastic bags. <laughs> Kevin's, I mean, that's a big issue, you know, when you're doing food. And Kevin said they order them from Sam's Club. Ooh. It's a detail, but it's important, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, and their food comes from Community Food Share, which is where so many people get their food. Mm -hmm. Regional food stores and donation. If they have excess food, it's donated to the food rescue. Uh, so I was quick. So, um, Ronnie, I have a question for you. I, I, I don't know what the finances are at the Senior Center. Is there any money if we did have our food here? Or is that not a Senior Center endeavor? So right now our budget is not able to support um, this, this, this work um, towards food insecurities. Uh -huh. um, but I mean, there's other avenues that we can look at. Right. Um, we could have conversations with, uh, with our friends board yeah, if, if they see value in this work for, mm -hmm. uh, to, to support. So right. do we get most of our money from uh, friends and the city? Those are our two resources, yes. To those two resources. Okay. okay. Um, you know, there's other things we can explore as well as a board. You know, our grants are available, available to support this work as well. Um, you know, there's, there's anything to look at. Okay, there's no you. reason, though, that you couldn't put it in your budget. I mean, you could request it. You could request it. <laughs> yeah. And it would just be supplies. Yeah. There's, you know, bags and things like that. It wouldn't be food. We wouldn't <coughs> be paying for the food. We'd just be paying for the extras. And, and that request wouldn't go in until 2026 right. because oh, this 20 budget, 20. right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just heard last night at the city council meeting, um, Harold, uh, made it clear that he's not looking to fund any level two um, which are would be new programs yeah. um, any level two programs um, because of the state of the budget next year um, and so it really is about maintaining our current level of, of services and not adding anything mm -hmm. anything new so that has a, a budgetary impact um, as well as you know the staffing piece of things i i would um, ask you know what what kind of staff involvement would that take? Because I think that's something that that Ronnie would have to look at in terms in terms of current work capacity, or is it all volunteer? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's a bummer. I I am really big into donation, and so for things like maybe boxes of, of um, bags or pens or pencils or something like that, it would seem to me that approaching maybe even Sam's Club and saying, would you be willing to donate a couple of boxes of, of things to the Senior Center for the distribution of food to um, low-income seniors? I mean, I always am, am into that, you know, asking for donations before we're willing to pay for something. So I think that's something to, to look into. Yeah. Did, did they talk about any, did, did anybody talk about any sort of um, licensing that, that no. we would need to, we would need to have? No, we're not. Uh, 
at the R Center, we're all coming and volunteer. No one has a license. Right. There's not like they don't have like a food safety license. I know that's something that the, that we were maybe, required to do at the youth center. Now maybe Kevin does, and I can ask him about that. That might be something to but consider. The volunteers so certainly we need know. to know yeah. before we started. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, Ron, actually, Ryan brought that up. He's talked to the uh, city attorney about it, and it appears we might. Yeah. We want to come back and give a description. We're doing to be sure about that. Yeah. Um, Just, and then if so, I'll get this get in this in my report mm -hmm. of the community food chair wants to provide all the food. And they, they want to be of understanding with the city and go through all that process. Okay. We've done elsewhere. A lot of things that I have on my list to ask them about is the licensing to come work under there so that's set up by the city. Okay. Um, yeah. in, our, in all of our discussions with the group, we, we have no no desire or see any need for the staffing from the from the city, okay. with all the volunteers, which that comes later, asking okay. for help. <laughs> I just want to say that through another organization I, I um, I'm involved in, um, we go to Sam's Club and they just give us like a like a gift card. They just say here. Mm -hmm. you know, wow. Go ahead. I really you can it. buy whatever you want. Yeah. Wow. So Both they're very easy about it. it. I yeah. think Target may be too. Mm -hmm. But I'd be happy to start looking into that because that's something that, that's like my wheelhouse. I know how to do that. So, mm -hmm. know. Well, we, well, we, if we do that, we can get to identify ourselves no. and we have a they get big aware of badges, of course, that we're part of the friends or part of the advisory board. We don't, we don't want to step across any lines where the city doesn't want us to do that. Is there a limitation? I've never been asked that question before. It's usually staff that is doing the, the work. I think it's something that we can, yeah, let us check on that and okay. see what, you know, recreation has ever done that, if children and families. We'll do a, list, us, of, yeah, we'll do a list of who we want to talk to. Yeah. One of them in my report is Subaru. They, um, do, they do pet food. Oh, yeah, they're really good yeah. to me. Yeah. 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 They brought that up. So what about pet food? They thought, well, I heard about that. Okay. Well, that's yeah. what people want to talk to before we make those kind of community contacts. Yeah. Yeah. Sure yeah. we'll check them okay. out. I hope this isn't the same question. I didn't hear everything you said, so I hope I'm not repeating it. Okay. Are there any sources of revenue from the community that we cannot accept? This is a revenue from the community. I would say anything connected to political campaigns um, or, or political candidates um, is uh, um, something I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. I'll talk to friends organization does not accept contributions from political parties or politicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a general rule of thumb. Good idea. Um, one last okay. question. Okay, yeah. um, Ronnie, I read in our wonderful new bill, congratulations, that is, um, that when there is a food drive here, canned foods, it's given to the table of Hope Food Pantry. Would, would we be able to, if need be, these are all thoughts, as you know, would that be able to change and be donated to the senior center? Depends on the direction we go and what we can and can't yeah. accept, right? From, from community. Yeah. I'm works. not familiar with this place. Right. I had to look it up. Right. It's yeah. East Ken Pratt. Yeah. And, and so I, I think once we identify what direction we want to go as a board uh, with this work, is that we are providing um, canned foods? Are we providing prepared and packaged meals? Are we providing um, food, uh, food to be served at our location directly? I think once we start there identifying what what we need in place to support that is it the license is it um, are, are we are we okay um, without it because we're serving packaged food but I, I think once we identify where we want to go then we can explore yeah. um, some of those options yeah we're getting closer but right. it's, it's huge right mm -hmm. there's just so many unknown variables right now for me to answer that question. Okay, thank you. Uh, but once we have, 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 have clear focus of the direction we're going, we'll support you in place that we do. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ann. Was that your last item? Yes, I, okay. I worked with three people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bonnie? 
I worked with Christina. <laughs> um, she gave me a lot of information about all over the city and the county, um, all different groups that are involved in the um, in food distribution. It was kind of um, frightening at first to look at all those all those <coughs> places and think, you know, how are we going to do this? So I think we need to really slim down what we're looking at. Um, where we're going to be doing it. When I first started looking into this, my thought was that we really need to go into a community that is underserved. And we really need to go out and find them, you know, go out and be there to the places where the people live who don't leave their homes, who can't really get out to come to any of the places that already distribute food. So along that line, I saw that um, food, what's the Longmont Food Chair? No, Longmont Food Rescue. Mm -hmm. They have to take their refrigerator out of Agape, mm -hmm. which was up across from um, Walmart on uh, Main Street. And uh, they were looking for a place to put the refrigerator. Yeah, they still are. Right. My thought is, is there any way we can have that refrigerator at Lashley? I think that's closer to communities that are underserved than this built. I think Stork West Side is kind of, you know, they're kind of doing okay. <laughs> um, I would like to see us go to a place that needs, you know, where the needs are and that aren't being served as well. Um, that was an idea that I tossed to John when I saw it, I forwarded the Facebook um, post and says, is there any way we can do something about their need to put this refrigerator someplace? Uh -huh. I understand, let me, I should have started out with this. I understand that we want to have something here because it will enhance letting people know about the new hours that the students, uh, the senior center is going to be open. Okay, I know that's a direction that everybody's looking in and I understand that. I get that, and I think it's smart. It'll let people know that there's a lot of activity going on. But I also think we can't forget the fact that we should be looking at places that need to be covered, need neighborhoods that are underserved. And we can be still developing this whole thing, making this our hub, but we can also be looking into extending it to other areas. Um, so, let me put it to you, Ryan. What do you think about having a refrigerator at Lashley? So I think that goes back to my uh, response to Anne, is once we have an uh, identified focus, because we, we need to know what, depending on what direction to go, you know, if we need to have licenses in place to do that work. Um, you know. That's true, I have right. Right, and, and so is this is this refrigerator, again, going back to is this refrigerator holding um, perishable items, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, prepackaged meals, and that, that will de determine whether or not it is an option. Uh, and, and the reason why I say that is if we're having two locations, top of my head, and, and again, depending on what we're serving, we would have to have a license for our location and that location license as well. Some liability um, involved, right? And also taking into consideration that is a, a shared space as well with uh, CYF Children and Family and Recreation. Oh, okay. And so we would have to um, at that point again once we have direction and focus, um, right. then if that is the direction we go, looping them into the conversation to say, hey, you know, again, shared space. Is this something that you can um, uh, support? Does this impact your programs that you have scheduled uh, here at these spaces and, and, and those those things? Right. I think the other thing to think about with regards to that facility is that it's not staffed 24-7. Mm -hmm. People really go in to do programs. Uh -huh. But one of the things that I just kind of whispered to Ronnie is to coordinate with our Children, Youth, and Families Division Manager okay. um, because they're kind of working on the same thing. Um, and they, the youth center actually has a food safety license that was given to them through, um, that they got through, uh, through public health, um, okay. and they have a refrigerator. And so oh. if it is, if there is the outlet, no, at the youth center, just right okay. across the parking lot. 
Um, but if, I think again, depending on what direction you go, there probably is the opportunity to leverage um, some of that, um, some of that work, just depending on where, where you land. I think Ronnie could have a conversation with uh, his colleague Hilda to see how that may or may not work. I, I don't know what their capacity would be um, to take that on as well, but it could be centralized and hmm. everybody knows they need some as well on the east side of town. Right, because that's what I was thinking is to find things, places in neighborhoods that people know enough to go to, you know, already have another purpose there. Um, it's a gathering place for whatever reason. And make that a place that we could have pop-ups and make food available. So, um, but I'm wondering if Longmont Food Rescue has a license. I'm wondering if that's something that they bring with them when they bring a refrigerator. I don't know. They didn't we get did their refrigerator from, from Food Rescue, but I know that for a long time, Food Rescue did do drop-offs there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. But I think it's a smart idea to... to um, no question. No. What? I have said this great. Great questions and great recommendations. Yeah, yeah. good and idea. I think it's a good, good idea. idea to um, to um, partner with something that's already going on, oh. you know, and just to enhance something that we can that we can work with somebody else on. So. Arlene is next. Arlene. Well, <laughs> I I'm trying to think of what all we've talked about. First off, the, the big issue is going to be. How are we going to get people here if they cannot get here? And so one of the things that John and I did is that we met with city staff, some city staff, to talk about transportation options. And um, well, it's pretty slim right now. So we've got some ideas from them as to places to look and people to talk to. So we will be pursuing that here pretty soon. As far as microtransit goes, which is one thing we thought maybe would be the way to go, is not gonna, it is not going to work for what we're talking about here. We also did talk about the fact that let's get it going and get it started here, and then, then it branch out. And we did talk about last week. Um, the thing that I'm kind of confused about <coughs> is it, it seems to me like we are not going to prep, we are not going to cook, we are not going to serve, we are going to be strictly a distribution site. So I'm not sure why that would require a license or even a food handler's permit, since we're going to say, here you go folks, here's a bag, take what you want. So that, that's where I'm kind of confused a little bit about the whole thing, but I think it's great. And yes, we need to reach other people. And that was another thing that, that we talked to Zach about because he had indicated to us that he could overlay um, on to the map that they had different areas of town to show us you know some breakdowns of gender and age and all that kind of stuff um, we had asked for it according to wards because if we know what ward it's in then we know what council member to approach and of course you're at, at large people are the whole county um, that quite doesn't quite work because they don't have it broken down like that. So um, we're still we're still working on that. But um, yeah, I, I think right now let's get it started. I would hate to see us get it started and have three people show up the first day. You know, that's not a whole lot of people. But if we're just a distribution site, people can come in. Um, and then as as it, as it grows, then yeah, I think we look at Lashley because that definitely is. I mean, Lashley does not have carpeting, so that's kind of nice too. But we would have to set up tables and chairs, don't we? You know, we could do it if we had to. So basically, transportation right now is out there. <laughs> and. And yeah. I talked to Lauren too. I kind of forgot about this whole thing. And she said the best thing to do is get the GIS maps and to overlay them and to find out where the areas where seniors live the most or large amounts of seniors and where the distribution already is of food. And then you'll see where they're lacking. You'll see the areas where senior lives and seniors live that aren't covered. That's and that would give us some idea of a direction to go mm -hmm. in. That's and that's where we asked for and it wasn't exactly available the way we now you're looking at it, but yeah, I mean, the information is there, it's just a matter of getting it. 
Yeah. So one of the things we discovered early on, as everyone talked to people, there's a lot of need everywhere. Yeah, there sure is. So that, that problem again was getting it focused here and using the senior center as that, as that food hub. Um, I met with Ronnie early on to determine the desirability and availability of the senior center. And Ronnie jumped right in and said, yes, the extended hour is going in place in September. Let's, let's start doing it then. So we have a place. The second thing was finding food. All the members who talked to the people and the community food share kept coming up as the supplier. You might remember the last meeting. 13 million pounds of food are distributed by them a year. Most of it comes to Longmont. So they have the, they have the ability, they have the food coming in. If I talked to Kim De Silva, the CEO of Community Food Share, first thing she said was, food is not a problem. We'll get it to you. And she suggested partnering with somebody specifically in Longmont, possibly around licensing and what have you, but that they would either to the hour center or she'll, she'll help us find that person. Said so if there's no group in Longmont that wants to partner with you, I'll get it, to, we'll deliver it to you here to the facility and you can take it from there. So that's in, in the works. Mm -hmm. They're very organized about this. They do it all in the county. They do it in Cruiser County and Boulder County. Um, so as I said earlier, they have a memo of understanding. They want to create something come to the city and say, here's what they'd like us to do. Is that okay with the city? Um, the hope is, again, we're finding lots of need. Start here at the senior center. I know we can expand out from there. One of the groups that Arlene and I spoke or was directed to speak to is the community neighborhood. Community neighborhood. Yeah, and resources, yeah. neighborhood resources. Yeah. As a way of finding not only where people have the need, but how we might distribute there. Mm -hmm. Once we have a successful year, it's important to have a pilot we can show to the council that it works here. We'd like to expand it out. Here's our here's our, our requests. Um, so that's that's pretty much where we've got. We've got the food supply. We've got the place to come to. There's some details to check on. How we get people here? Some ideas about that. There's some ideas about getting enough bags or whatever to distribute the food. Um, we're looking to give ourselves as much time as possible. Maybe late September uh, on a Saturday, eight to eleven ish for us to do that. Ronnie's volunteered to have the custodial staff help set us up on Friday. We need to find out when the food's coming in and how to store it when it gets here. We'll also get menus from community food share and they'll tell us what's coming so we know how to set up. Um, Longmont Food Rescue has offered some of their, their foods too, so we'll coordinate that as we get closer. Um, several things we found out for future is going back to the advisory board and saying, can we call you and who do you know? Why there are other organizations we can call me support as we get out there? I don't, we don't want to, like I said, we don't want to duplicate what's already being done. In order to do that, we have to find out who's out there doing what they do so we can coordinate with them. Right. So if anybody here has groups who may give you should call and say, do you know anybody we can count on? Are they doing this already? Is there a need for future when we find more food? It seems like finding the food is not the issue. Here in food share, I said, we have no problem with that. <coughs> to be able to distribute it to the legitimately mm -hmm. um, So funding transportation, possibly funds that came up. So you can't use microtransit. We may have to get funding for getting buses. What's it called? Eight Black? Or eight Black. black. One of the black. 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 Airport show. Really? To see if they would help with that. They did that? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're exactly. Hoping. But they do we're do hoping. some community yeah. work. So, so far, we've a lot of reasons. A lot of things we have to do. We're yeah. going to find out who's going to do it with us. So that's the process that we're going through. And about licensing, um, what do with the food that we don't distribute? It goes to Longmont Food Rescue or someone else. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing we find so far is how do we get this word out to people? Mm -hmm. and that's one thing the community food chair said is their biggest issue, not the food, not the volunteers. It's getting people to know what's available. Mm -hmm. How do we get out to the widest range of people? We don't know yet, no idea. So is there a way that we can advertise in the newspaper? <clears throat> and we can have like, you know, instead of just having a little thing like this, that, you know, sort of a nice, um, like a public service? Yeah, yeah something so, yeah. so that we could say, hey, we're starting this, yada, 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 at the senior center. And then each month we could say, here we are. Remember, here's how we're going on. And I don't know what that would cost. I'm sure the newspaper's probably not gonna give it to us free, but 
Maybe we could ask him. You know, How about PSAs? PSAs. Over what? It's public public service radio station. Same thing. Yeah. I think we might be able to do a public service announcement, but we'd have to look into it. Yes, we'd like to I used to use that a lot. If, if the city has resources, we might be able to talk to them. Not for them to do the work, but to tell us what we might be able to look, look, look at. Them. Yeah. Right, and I think when we get to that point, there are some resources that we right? can utilize things that uh, we have control of, right? Um, advertise on the Plus Marketplace using our uh, bi weekly newsletter if they need to go, um, using our Facebook um, platform as well. But then, as for anything outside of that, we have to look at comp the comms team to see what we can um, use CBY to, to help them get this set so we want eight men on staff and funds are not available at this point yet we'll see what comes up we'd like yeah. to at least get resources we can check out as you know that we can check out they don't want to put that burden on you yeah. Yeah. so john okay. what, what's the next step um i think we've got some ideas about communication like you said the food set up the place is set up so it's transportation and communication to neighborhoods and whatever to get people here mm -hmm. Like our said, we don't want to have three people show up and all this food sit here. So I think our next step will be find out about communication, um, get the minimal understanding from Community Food Share, see if we're going to partner with Home on Food Rescue with the Community Food Share, get that local community person. The Community Food Share wants to partner with somebody and us here. So we'll find out what that means. We'll, we'll report that so, over more. Are you saying you work? Uh, that, that's your work for the next month and report it on next month? Next month will be find out the level understanding, solidify the relationship with Community Food Share, find out how to advertise this as broadly as possible, and find out about transportation and what it may cost us mm -hmm. to rent from 8 Black or if the city has some resources we can pay for to get up with that. It's interesting, food is not the problem. So, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So, I just have one last comment, and I'm pretty adamant about this. Okay. I don't want stuff showing up that's already spoiled. I don't want stuff showing up that's already outdated. Um, our seniors deserve better than that. And I've seen this at other places, and it's like, no, we're not going to forget the fact that our seniors deserve better than that. And so, the stuff that they get is going to be good. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty adamant about so that. I don't just, mind throwing stuff away. That's yeah. that is. Yeah. Have you seen that with community food check? Um, I haven't seen it here. No, but what I've seen is stuff that they're not gonna. Yeah, one of the groups that approach this was community food share, yeah. Walmart fruit rescue. Rescue. Yeah. Yeah. And they pick fruit, but they also you know pick up what's on the ground. They they're careful, yeah. but we don't want. Secondhand food, no, one, right. and that's not expired foods, whatever. And everyone we've spoken to, but our lane says she's adamant. She's not kidding. <laughs> we're very direct about that. So we're very clear to people we're talking to. What and Green Food Share says that is not an issue with us. Yeah. We sort through this stuff out here. Oh, I wouldn't you. cross her. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I want to say about communication—that's going to be baby steps, figuring out how to make it bigger, how to make it bigger, because. We could start by letting people know and then use the resources you're talking about. But we also have to remember that there are, pe there are plenty of people out there who need food, who don't have a computer, who yes. don't get, right. the, you know, right. get the information online and things like that. They may get the go book, but they don't really get anything else. So we, this is going to be a step-by-step -step process as far as you know, starting smaller, making it bigger, making it bigger, and, and expanding continually where we're covered. So, yeah, I'll have you said that six and eight. Yes, I'll, I'll do one yeah, of those signs so that you flip around. Done. I'm just talking. Oh, you're done. Okay, and you got one more. Okay, and just a few comments. The people I spoke with are all aware of the hidden hungry out there. Mm -hmm. They're all trying to find ways to reach them. And two, the Longmont music station that plays soft music all day, advertises the senior center on it. We could add the food onto that. Mm -hmm. And then we need bins or something to put lettuce in or mm -hmm. tomatoes or... It depends on how it's delivered. Yeah. yeah. You have to see what in a box. John's going to come over to the R Center with me someday. 
and so he can look and see how it's set up there, mm -hmm. just just for ideas, you know. So would Longmouth Public Media be able to advertise for us as well? Probably? I can look into that. Okay. I'm for sure. Sure. Well, there's a lot of things to look into. Good work, everybody. Really. That's one last thing. That's good. Yes, ma'am. That's <laughs> really good. <laughs> one last thing. Yeah. Okay. I want to thank well, Lonnie for when he just jumped right and said, as soon as we said we had a need, he was there to offer the senior center. Christina is amazing as far as who she knows here. Um, <laughs> when you ask Christina a question, all of a sudden she starts doing emails for you. <laughs> the response we got from that was really helpful. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Yes, yes nice I think it's Talk, talk about talk about contacts and enthusiasm. You guys have been great. You make this so much easier for me. I get some of the credit. You guys get all the credit. Thank you, Jerome. Hmm. Thank you. That's a good idea. Well, I'm happy to work and keep it moving. John's been busy. It must be a good idea. I got butterflies in my stomach, and I do that when it's the unknown, uh, which is good. You're going to help. Mm -hmm. You're going to help with the food. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring your butterflies. We need to help. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Uh, uh, Arlene, do you have anything further to uh, add on transportation? No, because pretty much everything is pretty much the same. So I know I sent notes to Ronnie and said, and, you know, we're just sort of kind of moving along like normal, so don't waste a sheet of paper on it. <laughs> okay. No report. Okay. No Lonnie. I got something in the email um, uh, online um, from the Boulder County Agency on Aging, and it was about a person who was going to be speaking in a meeting we were going to have in August, and it got canceled. But it was about Vision Zero. Vision Zero. So I contacted her, and I said, I'm curious, who would be a person to contact about that. And it turns out to be an old neighbor of mine who lives yeah. right here in historic West Side. And uh, her name is Cammie Edson. And she's been the person referred to. So I was wondering if there's any way we can get her on an agenda. Well, um, Vision Zero is part of Longmont now, right? Yeah, they yeah. presented last night. Yeah. Um, they did also Cammie and uh, Bill and... Did they? Mm -hmm. okay. So we could have them do it. In fact, I thought that Jeff was going to arrange for them one time to come talk to us. But, yeah. Okay, but what would that be? What are the other future agenda items? Vision. That would be transportation. It would be vision zero. Vision. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'll email them now and, come and copy you in case. Okay. Anything further, Lonnie? Nope. Yes. Annual report. Uh, have that it should be about. Uh, well, I don't know where you got it in your packet, but uh, the annual report. Yeah, I thought I saw Brandy in here. Uh, yeah, dropped off some items for. Oh, I see. Okay, does that go along with the annual report? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, this this annual report is some. This is the uh, I think the fourth one that I've seen. So this this is not new. It's basically the same format that the senior center staff has been doing brandy, I think, primarily um, for the last four years. Uh, Ronnie sent out, I, I thought this would be good for everybody to see because it's really our only record as far as the kinds of things that have been done this last year. To read through this stuff, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but my, my gosh, I mean, look at all the stuff they've done in a year. It's, it's yeah. really incredible. I've always been impressed with that. So anyway, uh, the first part is just these uh, some of the board highlights. You should have gotten an email asking if you had anything to add as far as the highlights. And it mentions the surveys and the Wyoming trip to the Northern Arapaho, the Senior Recreation Coordinator. Well, you can read for yourself. And those are the kinds of things that we get actually if you, did, you put down all the things that we did, I think it would be a couple, three pages, you know, but it's literally just about the highlights. So, is there anything anybody would like to add to the highlights this far? No? Okay. Uh, and the goals, goals are the pretty much the same, except um, we're going to continue housing transportation outreach. Uh, we made a motion last time to make recommendations to the city council, whatever they are, in April. Um, continue our outreach to underserved com uh, communities and develop relationships. So we've talked a lot about that. Just the conversation we had just now was a lot of this stuff. You know? So I think 
in my opinion, in the three years that I've been here on the board, uh, there's a lot more talk, a lot more interest in developing relations with other community organizations than there, than there was. That's great. That's, that's just, I, I think that's the way to go. Uh, the new goals strengthen the, the friends uh, connection, and we're working on that. We'll continue to work. And uh, new areas and weekends at programs. Uh, I did have a question on that, Bonnie. Uh, are you going to be how are you going to be collecting data on the kinds of people and number of people and all that kind of stuff that come during the weekend and evening? Absolutely. So we're, 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 our goal is to assess um, the impacts these additional hours are having on our on our guests. Who's coming? What what attendance numbers look like? Uh, we'll, we'll look at uh, registration, re registration and enrollment numbers as well for each group. Are these programs that that are these programs drawing in um, our guests in these evening hours? Do we need to evaluate and bring in different programs? So it, it's just going to be an evaluation period for a while to see okay. what is working, uh, what the need is, what what is great. build on what's working, and, and and make adjustments when we need to bring right. new programs um, as, as well. And you asked a question earlier about the kind of where the money comes from. And if I added this up correctly, we get a lot of money from friends. I added up $94,419 if it's listed in this report. That this board right, has? Chuck? About $95,000. The senior center. The senior center. What did I say? No, no you did. Yeah, yeah right. you did. Okay. Yeah. okay. So anyway, that... Uh... Thank you, Chuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't in person. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, so anyway, that's, unless you want to add something, the value of this, in my opinion, is I have consulted this annual report in previous years, I don't know how many times. And so this is good for the record. So if you need to look things up, so, Ronnie, I don't want to ask you to go through everything, but why don't you hit what you think is important? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just the, like Dave said, this is a quick, I would say one page or definitely not one page, but a quick resource to um, pull in information for the past year. You know, again, the, the work we're doing, who mm -hmm. we're serving, uh, you know, quick highlights. Our door count for this past year, we had 88,209 total visits. Um, we'll put visits, not guests, because those are multi, you know, uh, repeating guests as well in that number, but over 88,000 visits this past year, and that number continues to go up every single year as, as our community continues to grow and we continue to offer new uh, new programs here at the Senior Center. Mills and Wills served 9,875 total mills on site, so almost um, 10,000 mills out of our location here, Monday through Friday. Um, and delivered an average of 467 meals per day to our customers. So, again, I know we talked about that earlier, just the impact Mills and Wills has on our community, right? Uh, it, you know, um, John mentioned that it was number two to Denver, right? And we, we see it. We see the amount of people we, we bring in. I volunteer um, twice a week, I'm sorry, bi-weekly, twice a month to, to be a part of that just to see Who's coming in? Have conversations with our guests. Uh, be that be that support to, yeah. Not only be that support, but you know, I think it's important for our guests to see me in, in a different space as well, right? Um, serving their food or serving their food, and and, and uh, just making that personal connection. So, you know, Mills and Wills is doing a fantastic job. Our SETC group who provides uh, free programs or, um, you know, very low cost uh, programs to support our seniors with technology, you know, offering classes to teach them about these devices, teach them about technology, or just helping them troubleshoot um, their own devices that they bring in. They had 184 total sessions uh, this past year, 2,656 participants for their programs and those drop-ins. Um, and they well, I'm sorry, they had 825 total program hours. Out of those 825 total program hours, we had 31 volunteers who contributed 5,600 total hours towards that work. So yes, those 825 total hours are the programs themselves, 
but again, the prep before, the prep after, and the work during total 5,600 uh, total hours for those one yeah. volunteers. So, uh, you know, just again, highlighting the work we're doing out of our senior center. Our tax aid uh, this past year, we had um, 960, I'm sorry, 989 total clients come through the senior center for tax aid support. Um, and our volunteers, those volunteers help 712 of them uh, federal file federal uh, and increase state tax returns. Our supportive services team, you know, um, we talked about every board meeting. We talked about the great work that they're providing, the, the great work they're providing, and the services they're providing here in the community. Um, this past year, 1,358 total individuals were served out of the senior center. Uh, in our, in our, while well also, I should say, while also providing 422 uh, counseling sessions for 67 individuals as well. They also provided 355 group sessions for 101, 101 individuals who participated and attended, and offered 248 programs with respect to resource and caregiver education support as well. So, we, again, our team. That does a lot of work outside of those one-on-one -on -one appointments uh, with their clients. Our recreation, our senior recreation services team. We have Amy, Amy in attendance today. Um, you know, this speaks to a lot of the work her her team does. Um, they offered 610 programs this past year, with 9,094 total participants registered for our programs. And so this is also during a transition where we are working to have our, our drop-in programs uh, to keep better attendance, uh, whether it be signing in or registering through our online registration system for those as well. But we have 9,094 total participants registered through our registration system. Um, so again, that I just wanted to point out, we're also missing some numbers in there as well as we make this transition. So. I would say it's easy to say over 10,000 participants this past year. CEPs with support of the friends as well, put on free programs every month. Uh, we had 1,193 participants for our free programs this past year. And so, uh, you know, what, what's very important about that is we have individuals in our, our community that don't always get to pay for our, our programs, right? And, and the support friends provides for us to offer these free programs, showing that you know we had we had mm -hmm. almost twelve hundred participants uh, in those programs. It just speaks volumes about you know what it is we offer, who we're supporting, and again just the work that our friends does to support us as well. SETC. Um, oh, I'm sorry. And, and, and with that, this past year. We offered 83 programs in Spanish, which is 30 more from 2022. As we discussed with the board, you know, we're being very intentional with that. Hiring a bilingual recreation programmer to help grow and build our Spanish programs. Uh, and, and just, she hasn't been with us for a full year. And the fact that she's already increased that by 30 more programs from 2022 is, is pretty awesome and shows her dedication to that work as well. Uh, our SETC, Senior Center Tech Connect Group, again, another uh, free program as well. Oh, no, I already hit SETC, sorry about that. We also have our Net and Pearl Group, uh, who uh, we provide space here at the Senior Center, donated 1,976 total items, uh, clothing, hats, blankets across the community, uh, coupled with our Lap Robes Group, which donated 263 lap robes for babies, children, and teens in our community as well. Um, so again, just the reason why I pointed this out is just to highlight the tremendous work that our, our volunteer groups are doing, as well as our support services and our recreation uh, program uh, services team is doing as well um, for, 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 our, for our seniors and for our community. Um, you know, I, I, I talk about it all the time, how fortunate we <coughs> are to have this collection of professionals, but to see their, their, their work in action and how passionate they are every single day, it's just incredible. So. Uh, I'm very fortunate that I get to be here with them and be a part of this process and uh, contribute to the work that they are doing. So, any questions for me on, on the staff side? That's a lot of stuff. It's a lot. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot. And it's a lot to celebrate. 
I, I have a comment. Sure. Yes, sir. You're open eight to five, five days a week. Yes. That's, and you're off. It's closed two yeah. weeks. Yeah. So that's 2,250 hours. That's a lot of stuff happening in 2,250 hours. Right. When you, when you look at the numbers relative to that number, that's a very high percentage of participation or effort, I guess you could say. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Have one to uh, check. You know, I, I keep hearing from people that I've run into. It says, that, you know, you seem to say here in Longmont is just great. They offer so much, they do so much. You know, I keep hearing such good things about the senior center um, in comparison to others. You know, people have said, I came from so-and-so, and we don't have anything like that here. And so I think we have to really commend the people who work here on keeping this going and, and doing, participating in a way, and making it the quality organization that it is. Because you guys have done a great job. And uh, yeah, I think everybody should be applauded for it. Because we are known for being one of the finest senior centers around. And, uh, you know, I was invited to the uh, Boulder County AAA meeting that was here in June. Mm -hmm. I think you're both in attendance, right? Yeah. Right? And uh, so kind, of, kind of, what's that? So is John. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of yeah. over a lot of this and just shared, just bringing awareness of what we do out of this facility. And, you know, went through all of it. Everyone was like, it was, it was quiet. And then when I got to the very end, it was just a holy cow. Like, we didn't realize you did all of that out of this facility. Mm -hmm. And so just bringing that awareness, right, to, to that that, or that group specifically who you think would have you know, good tabs on what we're and, and knowledge of what, what's coming out of here was just what was was appalled and um, um, and, and then they they, they they shared that information because we didn't know, you know, yeah. so which is and, awesome. And I think too, because we meet with all the different um, senior centers, you know, the BCAA. Boulder County Agency on Aging meets every month at a different senior center, so we get to see what the differences are. And when people yeah. came here, they were like, oh, well, I think we should make the meeting here permanently. <laughs> I like it here. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> a little cold. <laughs> you know, that day it was a little cold. It was yeah. nice. One thing I'd really like to see is uh, if we make a presentation to the city council next April, I would like that this is too much to throw at them all at once, but I would sure like to see some sort of graphics or something that could summarize this so they get the impact of everything that you do, because they don't know it. You know, they know they know what you do, but they don't understand, unless you hear this kind of stuff, right. what you really do. Mm -hmm. You could see when we were talking to them, they were kind of really leaning into it and listening, yeah, they because they were surprised at some of the things that were going on. Yep. And uh, like I said to everybody, don't be nervous about talking to them. You know more than they do. Yeah. They don't know what goes on. You need to be the one to educate them. So I think even to have something of a written, um, something written that we could give to them, to read at a later time or to, you know, or to look through to keep them, them to keep that they could refer to. I think that might be a good idea too. Yeah. Almost like a, a standard presentation, but in writing. So um, so they would have it as a reference that they could use, and it would probably help them because then when Ed, they had questions moving forward, they'd be able to refer back to it. So. Absolutely, and, have, and we could work on that. I have no problem pulling that together as well. Yeah. Um, well, I have Amy here. I think it's part for her to share uh, some of the feedback she's gotten from, from attending the CPRA meetings mm -hmm. about um, Spanish programs specifically, about, but also what we offer in comparison to the other cities, is that okay? Sure. Yeah, and I was just texting Ronnie, one of the things we're talking about doing on our GO, for a former facility, we did just an annual snapshot that made it more visible, everything we have completed in the last year. So that's something we're looking at doing here for our summer issue coming up. So we'll have all of the data from 2024, that summer issue of 2025, we'll have that just page spread ability, you know, 400 fitness classes da, da, just for this facility, and that was really successful. So I think that's a, a great idea to have those infographics. Um, CPRA is Colorado's Parks and Recreation Association. I'm currently the chair of their board for the Active Aging Programs and Services. 
section. And we meet quarterly as well as have board meetings monthly. Um, there is no other facility that has a Spanish program, let alone the capacity of the Spanish program that we are doing. So that was a huge piece of feedback and kudos to not only those who helped set this program up for success, but the continued growth of it. Um, when you look at the quantity of programs we are doing just for seniors, there isn't a comparison that we have found in the state. So there are a lot of things going very well here. Um, we're also really trying to share what has been successful and how it became successful. Brandy came to one of our section meetings and talked about kind of how the Friends was formed. We had SJ from SCTC speak at that meeting about how they formed so that these types of services, while well, we're very happy to have them here, how can we share how it became successful with other facilities so that more people can have those supports? So we are being looked to as a resource statewide, and I think that speaks highly to all of the work this team and our community coming to our services um, collaborates on together. And also, uh, you said no other facility offers not, not only the recreation services, but the supportive services as well, correct? Yeah, it is very rare to have supportive services um, as a part of a senior center. There are some facilities who maybe have one staff member who helps with those types of resources, but the quality and level that we have here, it, it doesn't exist. This is the first entity that I've worked at that has anything like it, and it's such a need. So that's huge. Sorry. Thanks, Andy. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Good report. Thank you. Um, where are we? We're behind the schedule, so we are. Friends liaison. Okay. Um, I went to the friends meeting last. Uh, I guess it was three weeks ago. All right. Anyway. Uh, I'm not going to report on all of the budget details. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about the, uh, the budget. And um, well, like, like I said, I don't have that material with me anyway. Uh, I'm going to talk about what I think was the reaction to what I reported. Uh, I reported that um, we made a presentation to the city council. And most of the folks, I don't think, Correct, correct me if I'm wrong as I go along here, but I don't think most of the people in the Friends group knew that we made a presentation to the city council. And they were very uh, interested, I think, and they wanted copies of the presentation that we made, and I think those were distributed. You sent those out the same day, I think. So there was a lot of interest in what we talked about uh, and the, the fact that we talked to the city council. Um, they said, somebody suggested, I forget who it was, that they could have gone, if they had known, they would have gone to the city council meeting. And I think that would have been fantastic. You know, we had, uh, what did we have, about six people or so, you know, at, at the city council meeting that evening. But if we had the friends group, we'd have another we'd double the size at least. And I, I think that, that could have been helpful. It's always helpful to have some more faces in the, in the audience. So I think next year, if we do that presentation, we need to make a point of including the friends group if they wish to come. Um, they were very um, interested in working with us, I think. And I got the sense that that um, you know, you've got a fair amount of money available and you want to spend it in the best place possible. So they're, they're certainly willing to listen to input from us as to how we might spend it on whatever, you know, resources, staff, programs, you know, I, I don't know, whatever. So my thinking was what I took away from the meeting, and again, correct me if I got this wrong, that it's kind of up to us come up with maybe some suggestions to the friends group and uh, have them consider uh, different, uh, different programs. You know, for example, this is just an example. I was just, I, I went through the, uh, 
aging little thing. I don't know if you've read through this, but that was, um, I thought it was really very well done. Lots of information in there. One area that, that kind of struck me was the need for employment of a lot of people, and uh, older people. And uh, Arlene and I were talking about this before. Maybe that would be something that we could develop somehow. Find employment sources, employment funding for seniors. And possibly, now what you said earlier, Christina, about the, you know, the budget for year after next doesn't look too good. But still, we might be able to find some resources for employment, and maybe the friends group that might be able to help on that. That's just an example. I don't know if that's viable or not. I haven't fleshed it out. But I'm just throwing that out. As a, you know, when we, when we go to our, our meeting next week, that's what I'd ask you to think of. Are there things that there's a need that somehow we could complement um, that need and work with this, the friends group on it? So that's. Uh, so uh, I guess I said my last point here. So the question is, I think everybody's on board as far as wanting to do something. Like Chuck had said a couple of times, we're all trying to serve the same group. Mm -hmm. And so the only question is what, why, and how. You know? Yes, sir. Uh, if I could interject on this one item. There. <clears throat> the Friends Charter essentially says that we fund activities here at the Senior Center. So, if there would be a need of uh, some effort that you're doing, okay, where we could provide funds here at the senior center to facilitate that, I think that is something the board would entertain. Yeah. We could have an employment specialist here. Mm -hmm. That might work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, again, that's just 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 an idea. That's yes, ma'am. Have you already considered helping out the food insecurity thing yet? Do we have to do anything to get that moving or how does <clears throat> Well, I've asked John to make a presentation at our next meeting. Okay, I'm good. So, uh, I figured there was something in the works, but I wanted to do <clears throat> I think a few brief comments were made and eyebrows went up because an awful lot of this well, we have a number of our board members that are still actively working in business, mm -hmm. and they did not realize how how extensive this problem is. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. I kind of knew because I've had conversations okay. with John, but okay. not everybody is, let's say, up to speed. So I've asked John you know, to make a presentation at our next meeting, mm -hmm. kind of put the numbers together, because I've heard some pretty remarkable numbers right here. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're you're much more knowledgeable than our group. So great. Yeah. I think the other piece that was brought up in the friends um, board meeting was to look at the senior center strategic plan and kind of where um, where um, the, the the team the division sees themselves going in the next you know in the next five years. Um, and really being able to front load that information as, as you know, these kinds of things uh, move forward. We had our department retreat last Friday, um, and so we're looking um, at what kinds of data we want to collect to really drive that, for this division specifically, um, drive that process. And so I think once that, um, uh, is, that work is more solidified, I think sharing it with this group, sharing it with the friends, um, so that you all know kind of what that direction looks like. And of course, it's informed um, by a lot of the data that, that has already been collected. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Amy, isn't there something, I haven't read it thoroughly in the new go, about having uh, an employment meeting, uh, meeting here or something? I think Brandy would know the job most. fair. Job, job, job fair? fair. Yeah. 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 So there is a job fair. It's in the CEPs and Special Events section, page 10 ish. Um, and that is directly for ages 55 and older. What um, opportunities are available in the community? Brandy's doing the main organizing work now. 
Uh, but we do have that here on site. Okay, so then we'll have it. September 24th. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and the final item under that is uh, a representative to the friendly group. Um, anybody want to? I'll, I'll say right off that I, I wouldn't mind because I'm kind of invested in it. And uh, so if anybody, unless somebody really, really wants to arm wrestle for it, <laughs> not enlisting weights. Um, I think you'd be a great choice. So, okay. if you wanted, if you want to take yeah, that. I, uh, I, I'm a, I, I believe in collaboration. I really mm -hmm. do. Yeah, that, that's the kind of stuff you need to do. So, if there's no objection, I'll be the liaison for a while. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. All right. New business. Uh, now, commentary. I don't know how to pronounce that quite right. Maria. Hi. Uh, bueno, uh, we, we start getting ready for the fair that we started in the evening. So, and some people sign up ready to help us. So, if you want to help us and you need a sign, so you can, you can help sign in here. So, uh, Senor Quintana and I went to the comité and meet uh, with uh, Lisa Salazar and Medina. And then, um, we discuss about how we can help each other to recruit more people, Hispanic people, so they can have the service there and we can bring here. Uh, and um, so, so yesterday I, I stopped by to see how what will be on me for the fair. So Senor Quintana will be the 8 to 12, and I'm planning to be there the 11 to 3, or, or until they, they, they finish the fair. So uh, he has another compromise, so he has to be in the middle of the day. But I'm planning to be one hour before him. And also, I invite one of my daughters who are bilingual to help us in case they, we have somebody who speaks English, so she can help to that translation. Right. So she will be, I don't know if he earlier than me or during that time they are really good. So, and um, we will try to encourage the people to come and see what we have for them and pass information about the services that we have. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think that we are ready, so, and excited to see what we can do. So, if you want to help us, that's in if you want to speak Spanish, so somebody will be there who, who can help you. So, questions? You have some questions? I have a big cooler. John's gonna John volunteered to bring water. Yes. So we got that. Do you think one big cooler will be enough? You think? Okay, good. Um, so we're all set with that. I'm gonna come by and get the tent. Yes. Okay. okay. My question that was my question yesterday. Mm -hmm. I stopped by but he was so busy. So I stopped by to see uh, so where we can get a tent and so Senor Quintana will be late tonight to set up. The, the, the stuff. Mm -hmm. and so, do you need help setting up? Yeah, I think, yeah. So I can come early, whatever time you need. Okay. So, but he will stay late to 12 to set up and then start, and then I will be like 11 to, to stay until they done. Mm -hmm. And then if you help us, it will be so great. But also, if the people are there and we need to pass information or talk to them, so. And also, I think that there will be the mining of people who will, who will be there. Yeah, so we'll be there at 8 to set up? Yes, as well as in your Okay, mm -hmm. I can come by Friday and you can show me how to set the tent up. Yeah. And I'll put it in my car and we'll bring it on, on Saturday. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank okay. you. What was my question? So, it was my question there. Who can help to, to bring this stuff there? Now, how about the material? Yep, we're all we're all ready to go. So we got a box over there. Yeah. Now we have another box. box of those. So we have two boxes of those. But then we also have um, packets uh, for that are that are just in Spanish as well. Okay. So the, the Spanish section of the go, we make copies and staple them together. That's all right. Right. Good. Then we also have those on wheels, um, um, uh, pamphlets as well. Okay. 
Okay, I, I can in my truck today and have her ready for seven. Okay. Yeah, that's why I can buy and you can drop in there and then come back to whatever. Uh, for me, it's the midnight to, to three is a lot, so that's why I'm planning to be at least four hours there for sure. Yeah, but um, I can bring another material in my car today. I think. Great. Yep, and I have everything ready to go. Uh, and one thing I didn't think of tables. Are they supplying tables? I don't think so. Well, we'll, um, we'll take a look. Okay. Now we have the lab's hooks. I think you could slide them into my car. Yeah. Okay. So you said you have a, a Subaru. Subaru yeah. out there? Yeah, yeah. When do you have a Friday? Friday. I don't know if you need help. Okay. We're going to get a lot of ice Saturday morning, do you think? Can Where can you? Um, that advice for the cooler, the water. I think, like, wall. Walmart, um, any big King Supers, hmm. you know, um, Safeway. See if you can get them to donate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, see if you can get them to donate. Where you tag, that's yeah. right, has that tag on. And yeah, I think we're all set with the fair, yeah, right? Yeah, one there. Yeah, yeah, sure. I read some copies this morning for the people who need to see what is that. There's no way I need it. Oh, I don't have a for that. It's so cheap. Yeah, we need to start. So but I have extras. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants more information, oh, I have here. Um, so Maria, that? just quickly, what did you think of meeting with the people from El Comité? It was nice. It was nice, and then we planning to have contact to see what the events they have or we have. Yeah, and try to they refer the people and the people we are need our services here. And we may, they may be helpful with getting the word out about the food distribution too. Yeah. You know, we may be able to use their resources yeah, to let the nice people know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They used to yeah. do a few food distribution out of that community. I don't know if they still are. I think they used to get food from Community Food Share. Yeah, okay. So that would be another place. I don't know if they still don't, but they do. After the pandemic, they didn't change a lot. That's why I can say yes on that. It still changed a lot, so. Okay. Questions? Well, I see you there Saturday. Yes. Okay. Looking Okay. Oh, thank you, Maria. Good work. A lot of good work being done here. All right. Uh, new subcommittees. Um, <clears throat> I put that on because uh, I'm just thinking, let me just think out loud here. I'm thinking we got five more meetings September, October, November, December, and January. We've got five more meetings to kind of get our stuff together as far as any recommendations we might want to make. So if there's anything that you want to work on, myself included, uh, time is growing short. Those five meetings are going to go by very quickly. I'm glad we got started on you know food insecurity because that's you know more complex than it appears, always appears. Anyway, um, I would suggest, uh, I'm not saying anybody has to do anything, what I'm suggesting is if you go to the data presentation next week, uh, I think there's going to be all kinds of ideas that might come up, and I mentioned one that kind of struck me, but you might listen for ideas or you might want to make a contribution or you might want to work or you might want to make a, a project out of it or something like that as not only your own effort but as a group effort. And uh, at our next meeting, I think we, well, we don't necessarily have to have everything done by, you know, decided by the next meeting, but I think we need to start thinking about it. And so we, we need to start moving towards, you know, bringing things together. So that's uh, all I really wanted to say about that particular uh, item. Unless there's anything today that anybody wants to bring up. All right then. Uh, okay, I think we might finish a little early today. Uh, manager's report. All right, there you all have my report. Uh, just some quick highlights. The city has completed the work on our front entrance uh, with our 
to make sure our sidewalk is ADA compliant. Um, so what they did, if you haven't noticed walking in, or you came in through the east entrance, the old ramp, uh, I'm sorry, the old incline, they, they covered up and so rounded that off um, and, and moved the ADA sidewalk quite now. I can't think of the, the, the ramp, I guess, to the side. Uh, a little bit, and so what that did, it allowed more space. Uh, well, a couple things: quicker access from those walking from the um, um, sidewalk. I'm sorry, from the parking lot to get to that part of the sidewalk. Also, it allows those who are being dropped off um, through uh, via or any other mobility um, resource to. To, especially with the lift to um, have that space at the very, very front to be dropped off, um, easier access to get inside of our facility. And again, that ramp is still accessible to anybody else um, walking from the parking lot as well. So there's that. And also uh, right next to the handicapped parking, they redid that, that ramp as well. Before it was just more of a, a slope um, going into the parking lot uh, during the winter hours, um, winter, hour, winter season, it would pull in a lot of water and create a lot of ice and so mm -hmm. um, so they redid all of that area and if, if, if you take a look at it I don't know if you all noticed uh, but they redid all of it to where it's almost the ramp and then the sidewalk so instead of having one big slope it has um, the ADA compliant sidewalk installed as well so a lot of good work I'm, I'm very impressed how quickly um, the city was not only to to address that need, but also just, just the quick turnaround and during closure that they had when we first brought it up, I'd say less than three months to get everything um, in order for to, to have that work done, done during closure. And that's not that's not um, standard practice. There's a lot of hoops to go through, uh, but again, they, they made it an urgent need and was able to address it right away. So there was that. Also, some work was um, done outside of our um, the south side of our gymnasium, um, our emergency exit right there. Before, there was a small patch of uh, pavement and then uh, giant rocks. So we ran into an issue where, um, where we had a faulty alarm. So there was no fires, faulty alarm sounded during one of our CEPs. We had to have our, our guests exit out the entrance. And uh, as soon as we got out the door, we realized there's the giant rocks everywhere. <laughs> Sidewalk in it, so we realized we have an issue, and so we brought that up as well. And so we were able to extend the sidewalk out to the grass, which the grass is our location for uh, our evacuation site location. So easier access. Anybody has a walking device, wheelchair can now easily exit the gymnasium to that grass area. So they worked on that, worked on some landscaping, and they're still uh, wrapping up some of the landscaping pieces right now. But um, they did go around our facility, trim the. Um, Bushes trimmed a lot of our bushes, got a little, a lot of rid of a lot of dead trees, more so on the north side of our building. Um, our main entrance, uh, where they redid the sidewalk as well. We have that sculpture, sculpture piece up there. They redid the landscaping over there, and it's easier to access and go back there uh, where the sculpture is as well. So very pleased with the work that they've done. Following up with them to uh, see our timeline is for the remaining items, but a lot of work over closure. So. Before I move on to the next one, any any questions on uh, on that work? Okay. So that was outside. Inside, we had a lot of cosmetic work done inside of our building. Um, as you can tell, our, our in this room specifically, they replaced our carpet. So we have a blue carpet now to match the lobby, and uh, took our cream color paint around uh, all of our classrooms and painted it white now. So uh, I think it creates a much brighter feel. It makes the room feel much bigger. Um, and most of our rooms got an accent wall painted as well. So we had a lot of cosmetic work done. Uh, we moved some furniture around in our lobby and it just kind of makes it, again, it makes, makes that space feel, feel bigger as well. A lot of positive feedback from our guests. Um, um, to Amy got a lot of it, Brandy got a lot of it, and our front desk is hearing a lot of it. Just, they're just you know, some some quick highlights is just it just feels fresh. It feels like a fresh new building. It feels like a brand new building. Um, I went and checked in on a couple of groups before I came in uh, into this board meeting and did the same thing. And just like, wow, it just 
feels like a whole new whole new building and for us uh, for them they're doing um, I think it was what in Pearl in Pearl uh, they're doing their work they said you know with the white walls it just feels brighter and mm-hmm. allows us to uh, see the work we're doing better so just a lot of positive feedback all, all, all the way around let's see what am I missing I think those ones uh, August 15th here at the Senior Center 2 p.m. we have that uh, Board of County AAA Presentation 2004 report. Hopefully everybody can make it. Uh, if not, and that invite that was sent to you, the uh, packet is attached to it as well. So um, again, just a reminder that is here at the Senior Center on this 15th in room D&E. Does anybody know what that presentation is about? Everybody know? Okay, just want to check. Mm-hmm. Staffing update as we're getting it uh, Getting closer to September, where we are expanding our hours. Uh, we have our two candidates identified. One of them started with us July 29th, and the other one, uh, HR, is working to on board as well. So, very excited to have Becky and Iesha uh, to support us in the evening hours. And uh, we have finalized our, our schedule with our support services team as well to offer um, support services two nights out of the week Tuesdays and Thursdays, at the top of head, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, so we will be able to offer, again, recreation services and support services during expanded hours as well. As I mentioned, we're going to continue to assess, um, you know, who is coming to, to, to receive these supports uh, during those extended hours. And from there, evaluate, do we need to expand or do we need to shift? Is it, do we need to shift our, instead of Tuesday, Thursday, is it Monday, Wednesday? Uh, but again, we're just going to take things a little slow to assess uh, collect data information to figure out what direction we need to go and more adjustments need to be made. All right. Uh, I'll hit on those things. Uh, any questions for me? Sure. I noticed that um, it just struck, it's not really a question. Mm-hmm. Caregiver, caregivers are just struggling more than usual right now. That just mm-hmm. yeah. kind of hit me. I wonder why. Yeah. Um, and then at the same time, uh, the uh, the uh, you're up to date on counseling and uh, uh, supportive services. Right, mm-hmm. right. Um, and you know, like you know, that, that'd be a good question for Brandy. But the the information I have is just again as as our community community continues to grow for our to five and older uh, population. You know, a lot of a lot of um, a lot of individuals are taking on that caregiving role, right? And so, um, you know, supports the supports our supportive services team is to give them to giving them the resources they need to be successful. Um, you know, the information they have is just it's 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 a new role, right? We're learning it, or we're, 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 we're learning it, and it's not it's not an easy role to take on. So I saw in the report this uh, the, the data report. The, you know, the, end, the aging population is going up, we know all that, but the caregiving population is going down. You know, the, you know like LPNs and nursing you know, assistants, that sort of thing. It's a tough job. Yeah. 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 It's a tough job. And the, the, the minimum pay doesn't match the cost of living for right. a person or a person with a kid or two. You know, it's just a bad situation. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yes, sir. one of the things with superior support, I do volunteer work there. A lot of the uh, caregivers are aging as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the yeah. demands just become overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's just a zero sum game. They just can't keep up with the need. They want to keep people at home. Mm-hmm. Even reports from aging well say people want to you know, age at home. Mm-hmm. Caregivers don't want their spouse or whoever to go and foster whatever, whatever care facility. So. Well, the demand is incredible. Taking care of their needs. And they can, yeah. some with dementia, <coughs> that can and switch. And dementia can accelerate very quickly in mm-hmm. an environment from being, we can communicate really well to he's, he's walked off and I can't find him yeah. in a week. So it's, it's, it's a pretty fluid situation. So one of, the, demands. one of the things that we have done was the <coughs> caregiver actually is going to pass away before the care receiver right. because of all the stress on them. Mm-hmm. So any way that they can be helped, at least is going to get them through that. But then that leaves that person with no one. So 
don't pronounce this hard. It's hard. Ronnie, I just had a question. It's just really a curiosity one. Yeah. On these two people that were found um, ineligible because of their age for subsidized housing, is that because they were under 55? I got a bunch of I'm sorry. The younger folks were not yet eligible for subsidized senior housing due to age. So does that mean they were under 55? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry, these uh, it takes me a second to reflect. Okay. These notes can be way before I uh, prepare this report, but yes. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ron. The report. Um, one last item. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it isn't. City Council liaisons, not here, of course, are very aging. Got just that, that, just that we have the data. Um, Presentation again on the 15th. Is it? I just, I just okay. Um, on the 15th of August, two o'clock in the afternoon, here at the senior center, Lindsay Neville will give her full presentation of all the data for 2023. Correct? 23, mm -hmm. right? It's the 2024 report for 2023. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's got huge amounts. I saw the presentation that she did at the uh, BCAA meeting or the AAC meeting. And um, yeah, it's got huge amount of information. It's very interesting. If you can make it, um, I would definitely recommend it. And that's it. Okay. Uh, friends have already reported on that sustainability. There was no, there was no uh, meeting this month. Uh, and the last thing that I have is uh, I handed out a packet on the uh, on the various uh, legislative bills that we talked about. Yeah. Like, like this. <clears throat> Could have been, do I have enough copies? Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 just about enough copies. And the first one is senior property tax exemption portability. Okay, everybody got this? Okay, this is not as uh, overwhelming as it looks. It's mainly white space. So a lot of pages with a lot of white space. So I'm just going to go through this quickly. I don't know if all of you are up to date on this. Uh, I wasn't. I had to go through and kind of refresh my memory on some of this. But if, and I'm not sure, I, you know, this legalese is not easy to understand sometimes. If so, if someone understands it differently than I do, please say something. Uh, but on the senior property tax exemption portability, that's lost. Mm -hmm. okay. Then the next one, on page three, expand homestead ex ex exemptions, that lost. So if you go back to page 20, Let's see. Right. Eight, uh, go to page 18. That passed. And as I understand it, that is a two year, maybe you know more about this than I do. That, that's a two year proposal for 2025 and 2026. It ends in 2027 and what that does is it, it, it allows the homestead exemption if you apply to the county assessor's office and you otherwise qualify i'll use myself as an example we moved to colorado in 2014. okay i am not eligible for this so this kicks in in 2025 because the start date is on 2014 i think it's up so I am not eligible, uh, but I am eligible for the regular exemption in 2025 because that'll be 10 years for us. This is, as I see it, this was an interim bill for the two years that I was talking about to provide some seniors with property tax relief for those two years. And you may want to read through it yourself because I'm not sure I explained it very well, but there was a law that gave some relief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Is anybody going to contradict me on that? Okay. Well, I think the other thing is you as you look toward the next legislative session yes. if you identify bills that um, could impact seniors either positively or negatively we have um, one of our assistant city managers Sandy Cedar it tracks all of these bills for us mm -hmm. um, and we can take an official city position on them and so if you have a list of those bills we can ask her to track them and then um, as they come up for votes, then she would send a link um, to Ronnie so that he could, um, based on the feedback of this board, take a position on them. And it goes to Sandy, and then she she uh, does the does well, the rest of it. Would she consider coming to this group? I'm sure she would to talk about bill tracking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can follow up on that. Okay, I think that would be really useful. Um, all right, then, uh, that, that's exactly what I had in mind, by the way, okay, to, kind of, to follow up on something like that. On page six, remember we talked about accessory dwelling units? Mm -hmm. This has been in the paper a couple of times. Mm -hmm. That passed, it became law, and so that means that people can put, you know, what do you call them? ADUs. Pardon me? ADUs. Yeah, I was going to call it. Uh, Grandmother, Grandma, yeah, mother -in -law, mother -in -law. Like that, you know? yes. so they can put additional units in the home. Mm -hmm. And this bill says that they can, and it prohibits the local jurisdictions from saying you can't. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's one we did. That's one we wrote a letter to to our representatives and to our senators. So to see what the power of the letter did. Okay. And then senior housing income tax credit. Uh, that was a reinstatement. That's on page nine. I don't know too much about that, but there was apparently a tax credit and some circumstances that you could get that has been reinstated. It passed, uh, became law August 7th today. And so you can read through that at your leisure. Uh, then on page 11 is the local government's right to property for affordable housing that passed that became law today also and i remember we had a fairly uh, we had a fairly long discussion on that with marcia anyway uh, as i said that passed and that means that uh, that gives the local jurisdiction the right of first refusal to buy a public property which i think is uh, i think it's wonderful myself a lot of people in the community probably wouldn't like it yeah, if I wasn't aware of the housing shortage, I'm not so sure I'd like it. But with the housing shortage, it's just it's what we need, in my opinion. And then the, uh, on page sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, yeah. I think we all know this, Lonnie. I don't know if you want to say anything on this, but the Senate Bill twenty four zero four zero on funding for senior services basically to be reviewed every few years. A mandatory requirement to review social services funding passed, and that became law also. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Did they get the full allocation? You know, mm -hmm. they did not. Mm -hmm. They had to set. They had to. It was negotiated now. No. So a lot. A lot. I think a it lot. went from ten to two. Yeah, yeah. it was quite a bit. Ten million to two million. Well, at least we got the law in place. Um, and then uh, on page 17, prohibit residential occupancy laws. That means you can't have just one person, or you can't have just you cannot have family. As I recall, I'm going from memory on this, but I think that's what that was. So there were several bills that we were interested in that we talked in that passed. And and like I say, in my opinion. It, uh, it's good one. Oh, you can just keep this for reference. That's uh, no action required or anything, except that I would like to follow up and get ourselves in a position if we do want to make a comment or support some kind of a bill that we get our ducks in order ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything for the meeting today? I must have done something wrong. Finishing early. So, oh, yes. I I sent something to Ronnie 
Was it you? Did I send something to about the fair at the YMCA? Oh, Wasn't they, yeah. right. Uh, there's a fair at the YMCA and it has to do with um, international participation. Um, groups from different countries or different um, cultures are going to participate. But as Dave told me, they they don't I, they don't know that the pop, uh, the people participating or will be attending will be of the senior age group. Um, the thought was that possibly a lot of the people participating are not in the older population; they are younger. Yeah, so, but, did you you felt that it wasn't? That well, was just my feeling. Ronnie and I talked it over a little bit. Then. It was just our feeling that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, people are both fine, except that it's a different population than the one we're after. It's a, mainly a, a younger population. And so you got to think about time and resources and staff and all that kind of thing. So, you know, if you want to go, fine, but... but yeah. and to actually get a booth wouldn't really be yeah, a good wouldn't, use wouldn't of our time that or energy. Kind of okay, different. that's what I wanted to put out, yeah. see what people thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. But if anybody sees anything going on in the community that you think we might want to sure. represent it at, sure. just make sure you bring it up. We missed the fair. We missed the fair parade. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to say that I like this picture. Now, this is strictly my opinion. I felt very strongly that the one previously was very unflattering to seniors. That's just my opinion. But I like this one. Hmm. It's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, it it's is aggressive. Yeah. All right. Anything else before this? Before this group? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. John, Lonnie seconded. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carry. See you next.